Good morning, everyone. I think that we are having a little bit of summer going on where we live. This whole week, although the evenings, the, you know, the, the nighttime has gotten down into the low 50s, um, yeah, it has gotten into the upper 70s nearly every day. So it's been a beautiful week for us. And yeah, that was a real blessing. And if you look behind me, you will see a little can of paint. Yeah, I am going to be working on my project. And I thought that I would show you what I'm working on. So I'm going to get the rest of my stuff together and I will meet you outside on our porch. Well, I think I have everything ready. And what I've decided to do, this is actually one of my bedside tables, and I just picked it up at like a next to new store when we first moved into this house almost 16 years ago, and I've really never done anything with it. Um, so I just thought, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to sand the top, and then I'm going to paint the rest of it black. This particular paint I got at Lowell's, and no, this is not sponsored in any way. I just wanted to give you the information because I never heard of a paint that could perform as a claim, and we'll see in this video whether or not that claim is true. Um, but they said that it was um, self-leveling. That's what he said. He said that this was self-leveling so that you're not going to see your brush strokes. It's specifically made for furniture and cabinets. So yeah, that is what I chose and we'll see if it works as well as it claims. It also is supposed to be a lot more durable and they called this an oil enriched enamel even though it is a satin finish. I don't know a whole lot about paints except for what colors I like. So um if that helps you out in any way. But yeah, so I'm gonna give this a try and we'll see how this goes. Now, I forgot to tell you that the color that I chose is called New Black. It's not a real, like, dark black. It's more like a smoky black is how I would put it. So I'm not sure if the camera is really gonna be picking up that color, but that's what I picked out. Now the next thing I'm doing is I'm just taking some painter's tape. I know this looks like uh, masking tape, but it actually is painter's tape. And I'm just taping off these little lion's feet so that I don't get any paint on that. The first thing I'm going to paint is this little drawer that goes in the top. I just want to see how all this is going to look. I figured, uh, well, I'm kind of committed to it now, whether whether I like it or not. Well, that's rather nice. Well, I will set that aside and We'll see what that looks like when it dries. Well, I am no expert at painting, and that is the God's honest truth. But, yeah, I am going to continue this project, and I'll show it to you when it's all done. Um, well, when the paint is all done. The top of it, I am going to, you know, it is so humid out here. My glasses are steaming up. Um, but the top, the very top, and the lip around the top is just going to be uh, left natural. We're just going to wax it. Whoops, sorry about that. And so, yeah, that's what I'm going to do, and I will talk to you in just a little bit. Well, the next thing that I'm going to paint is this lamp, because there are so many marks on it, yet it's the perfect lamp. It's tall, and it's thin, and it just works really well for me, so I'm just going to paint it to match. So that's the next thing that I'm going to do. And yeah, 
The other thing that I wanted to tell you about was that um, raspberry vinegar. Because I didn't do a video, um, I had to still take care of the vinegar. So I thought um, that I would insert that here. I thought I would show you how it is I'm going to strain these. I'm going to use my jelly strainer, but I'm putting it into just um, a two quart container for now in order to strain out the raspberries. And I'm just gonna let this drain for a couple minutes because if you can see, it's still dripping. Maybe you can see, I'm not sure. It's still dripping. And so that way we can get as much of the raspberry flavored vinegar into this container. But then what I have done is I have prepared another container. It's just a large four cup measuring cup, that's all it is, with some cheesecloth. And I've just put a rubber band around it to secure the cheesecloth. Should be good. And I'm just gonna strain it one final time. And what I've done is I saved the original white wine vinegar bottle. I just took the label off and I will just funnel that then back into its original bottle. And you have to remember we added some um, sugar and plus we also have the juice now from the raspberries itself that's why I have a little bit left over and I'll just find another container to put that in but yeah now I'll just label this and I will have some nice raspberry vinegar for my dressing and it turned out really good I even had my husband take a little taste of the vinegar and it was just wonderful. It had this wonderful uh, raspberry flavor with just a touch of sweetness, yet the nice white wine tartness, and I don't know if that's the right word, but anyways, it was really good. And so give it a try if you'd like, because it is very easy. And so, yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and get this painted, and I have one other bedside table that I'm going to paint that looks similar to this one, but was in a lot worse shape. So yeah, I'm gonna get that out onto my porch, and yeah, I'll talk to all of you in just a little bit. Well, yeah, a little bit of a change of plans on where I am going to be painting. And that's because when I was outside, um, just the way the sun was and the position with the porch and that, I just couldn't see really well. I noticed that I was missing a lot of areas that I wasn't seeing. So Rick just helped me bring them back in the house, put them up on top of the, the island here. And that way it's a lot easier because I mean, I, I don't have to bend. I, it's actually, it's the perfect place to do the painting. So yeah, as you can see, I got the first coat on both of these tables and I think that they're beginning to look really nice. Remember, the top of this table is going to just have a, a clear Minwax put on top. Um, so it's going to be that black with the natural mahogany top. And this table over here, I wanted to show you the top of that table. Okay, you can see the surface of this table here. This part here is the natural mahogany. We do not know what they put in the center of this table. If you look underneath the table, it is wood, but this is not wood. So um, we're not really sure what it is. It's definitely not leather. At first I thought, well, wow, could that be leather? But it's not leather, yet it's not a wood. And my husband tried sanding it. As you can see, it's just not really sanding either. So what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to paint this center area 
the same color as the base, leaving this outer trim here to just have the clear Minwax coat put on it, along with this edge, of course. But yeah, we're not sure what this is. So yeah, it's just one of those crazy things that when you start a project, you really, you really don't know what you're getting into. And I did want to show you the lamp because the lamp had a natural black pole here. This is metal, a metal pole. And this was just a resin, just a fake wood. So I just decided to paint that and then the base down here, this part. And I think it turned out really well. I think you can kind of see there's very little difference between what is called new black and what would then a real, a real black. But there is a very slight, hopefully, hopefully you can kind of see the, the color difference there. But yeah, it's getting there. Um, I'm not in a hurry to get this done. I'm just going to go ahead and give it its second coat here in a couple hours. And yeah, I'm actually... Uh, Rick is on his way home. He went to a music store that we um, had been at previously because we're getting new speakers for the church. Our church's speakers, uh, for I mean, the they were blown. That happened before we even got to that church. I mean, it was it's been that way. And when we had somebody come in to look at them, we're thinking, you know, maybe it's just we're not adjusting the soundboard right or something like that. But they said, no, they're blown. And what happened, he said, is that somebody probably turned everything up to the max and it blew the speakers. So these last three years, the church has been trying to save up in order to get new speakers and we finally have arrived to that point. And that's what he's doing. So when he gets home, yeah, I think we're going to grill up a couple steaks and have a nice salad. And you know what? If these two tables don't get done until tomorrow, that's cool too. Because, hey, I'm in no hurry. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you like this. And yeah, I know that you're not going to see the finished product at the end of this video, okay? But I will be sure to show you the end products of what it looks like when the bedroom is all done. Because remember, I also have my vanity that Rick is redoing and he is going to redo all of that. Because at first I was going to paint the bottom of it like this, but as he was sanding it down and prepping it for me to do that, he's like, oh my goodness, Patty, this wood is beautiful. We should not be painting this wood. So it was a solid mahogany antique um vanity and so yeah he's slowly working on that because yeah he's still got to stack that wood and get the rest of it cut so yeah i'll talk to all of you in just a little bit <music>that we would look at 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are not destroying speculations and every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. The other day, my husband and I were speaking with a Christian that was burdened down and struggling with worry and regret. And I found myself thinking about their situation throughout that day. And today's verse came in mind. Now, I want you to picture this. You come home from a long day at work. You're exhausted. So you walk into your living room and lay down on the couch. It feels so nice to lay there and rest after a long, hard day. But then in the corner of your eye, you see something moving on the other side of the room and you notice it's a rattlesnake. Do you say to yourself, oh, I'm too tired to worry about that now. I'll deal with that later. 
Of course not. You jump up right away. You alert your family and you call either 911 for help. You probably even start praying because this could be a potentially life-threatening situation. And this is how we need to treat our negative thoughts. Now, I do not want you to be under the impression here that I am talking about the power of positivity, because that is not what I'm talking about. And I know that this may even sound a bit extreme, but negative thoughts, which are lies, are opposed to God's truth and character and should be treated with the same way as we would treat it a rattlesnake in our house because we are in danger when they enter our minds. We have to immediately rise and take action. We must take that thought captive and bring it under submission to the truth of God's word. These thoughts are poisonous to our minds and souls like a rattlesnake bite to our bodies. If we realize that danger, we'll be extremely vigilant to watch what we allow to creep into our minds and to remain there. Thoughts cannot be taken captive until we recognize them for what they are. Sometimes bad thoughts or bad thinking can be obvious and we can easily recognize them as sinful, evil, or even destructive. But many times, destructive thoughts can be as subtle as snakes, quietly lying in the background and dangerous to our spiritual well-being. And this is why I use the illustration of a snake in today's devotion. We must learn to deal with them on the spot, just as if a snake had entered the house. And my point to that is, it's not about the power of positive. It is the destruction of the negative. Like the Christian that we were talking to, who is constantly going back into his past in his mind and bringing and remembering his regrets, his woulda, coulda, shoulda in his mind. That does not allow a Christian to move forward with God's plan and God's purpose for that person's life. We cannot undo the past. We can only go forward in believing and trusting that God has forgiven our past and he is providing a future that will bring glory to him. Remember, life happens. Our mind is active and thinking during every waking hour and even during night in our dreams. We have a real enemy that desires to keep us from progressing in our faith and desires to steal our joy. We must develop the habit of watchfulness over our thinking. I know this is a challenging discipline. However, this discipline will protect your spiritual walk with the Lord and be life-changing which is why it's important to know God's word, since the word contains God's thoughts. So continually examine your thoughts and ask yourself, is this true and good? Does this help me or hurt me? As Philippians 4, 8 tells us, Finally, brethren, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is of a good report, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, dwell or ponder on these things. God bless, and I will talk to you again on Friday, and I hope that everyone has a blessed week. And yeah, be sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps me with YouTube to be able to get the video out where other people can see it. And yeah, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. And I'll talk to you on Friday.